today marks the feast day of an influential saint in the Franciscan order. Saint Bonaventure was a mystical writer known for his theology and unifying spirit. At a young age, he was cured of a dangerous illness through the intercession of St. Francis and is referred to as the second founder of the Franciscans. And joining us now to discuss is Father Dave Pavanka, president of Franciscan University of Steubenville in Ohio. Father Dave, welcome back. Always so great to be with you. Um, oh, if you don't you so mind, much. can you talk to us more about St. Bonaventure, his life, and also how he became a Franciscan? Well, thank you so much. It's always good to be with you. It's actually a wonderful story. Uh, Bonaventure was studying in at the University of Paris. He was quite the intellectual, and he met the friars, and he was inspired by the friars. But he, one of the things that he said is that they lived a simple gospel life, and, and that was in somewhat of a contrast with the great intellectuals. I mean, Bonaventure was studying at the University of Paris. Uh, Thomas Aquinas was there at that time with some of the greatest minds in the history of the church. But he was attracted by the way these men lived the gospel life. He said they lived it simply, they lived it authentically, they lived it beautifully. And then ultimately, Bonaventure was so attracted that he joined the friars and spent the rest of his life. And as you mentioned, was the ultimately the seraphic father of the order, but also our general. So it was just by the witness of the life of the friars that really attracted him. Yeah, that's so beautiful. And you mentioned um, him being the uh, seraphic doctor. Can you elaborate on that for us? Yeah, well, there's there's actually been a lot written about that, but the the saying is that he burned with the love of Christ, that, that he was so animated by the love of God and being faithful to the love of Christ that his heart was burning. But one of the things that I think that's most beautiful about Bonaventure is that while he was a great intellectual, he also understood that there the heart had to be engaged in the theology. It couldn't simply be an intellectual exercise. So the while he was a doctor of the church, I dare say one of the greatest doctors of the church, uh, he was ultimately animated by a deep burning love for Christ. And that's really why they, they gave him that title. Yeah, and while serving um, as a superior of the Friars Minor, uh, yeah. St. Bonaventure really did you know, created a sense of unity despite the differing ideas of how to interpret St. Francis's message of poverty. Um, that said, how do you think we can best follow his example, especially now, you know, with what we're facing in such a divided world? You know, the, that's just such a really, really good point, because it wasn't just what Bonaventure did with the unity and the Franciscans, but it was all religious life. A mendicant religious life, the Franciscans and the Dominicans were radically different in that time. And there was power structures in the church that wanted to suppress them and didn't want to have the, the Franciscans, the Dominicans. And Francis really engaged, or excuse me, Bonaventure really engaged them and, and, and began to dialogue with them. And it, it's fair to say that there may not be a Franciscan or a Dominican community if it wasn't for Bonaventure. But one of the things that Bonaventure really stressed was that it, it can't merely be about laws. He said that, that you can have all the laws in the church and all the laws in the community, but if the heart isn't engaged, ultimately there's not going to be unity. Everybody can know what the law is, but unless the heart is engaged, unless the heart has been converted, unless the heart loves Jesus, there's not going to be unity. And it seems to me that's exactly what we're seeing in the church is, is that we have laws in the church, but if the person's heart hasn't been engaged, if their heart hasn't been evangelized, People may not be able to be united in, in the in the one law that we have as a church. So I think Francis, or excuse me, Bonaventure, continually reminded us that that it has to be the intellect and it has to be the heart. It has to be the laws and it has to be the heart. And when that comes together, the church can be more united. Yeah, that's such a great point. Um, I'm curious, how do you think he is still relevant to us today? Well, particularly here at Franciscan University, one of the things that, that Bonaventure really focused on was the bringing together faith and reason. You know, I think of Bonaventure, University of Paris, one of the greatest universities at the time, but, but it wasn't just intellectual. And I'm honestly, I'm afraid that in so many universities in our country today, it's merely an intellectual exercise and, and, and you forget faith. So if it's just reason without illuminated by faith or just faith without illuminated by reason, but Bonaventure reminds us that those two come together, as John Paul continually reminded us as well. Faith and reason have got to come together. They can't be separated. And I think we need to remember that. Yeah, and Father Dave, um, anything else that you want to bring up about St. Bonaventure that maybe people don't know about? I think one of the things that, that I appreciated about him 
was ultimately his love for simplicity. This was, this was again, one of the greatest intellects in the life of the church. Uh, and yet, when he was taking a look at the mendicant orders, both the Dominicans and the Franciscans, he said they lived a simple gospel life. I think in the world today, we can complicate our faith, we can complicate following Jesus. And Bonaventure, again, one of the greatest intellects ever, says we need to be more simple. That's, and that's not to say that it's not wise or not smart or not intellectual, but to live a simple life. And that's something that I think we should always try to remember, is that simply be faithful to Jesus. Yeah, well said. We don't have a whole lot of time left, but I want to ask you this last question. As you know, yesterday was the feast of St. Katari Tekakwitha, and I know that you visited um, her shrine. What can you tell us okay. about that experience? You know, maybe just to connect to what we were just talking about, if, if you've been to her shrine, it's the simplicity of it. This, this is a young woman who ultimately we've canonized as a saint. She loved the Lord. She was converted again by the witness of the Jesuits that were visiting. She, she experienced them. She encountered them. And there was something about them, the way they lived the life that inspired and moved her. She obviously was converted. But there's this great saint, and it's just a little altar with a little shrine where she's buried. Yeah, It's just a great Franciscan theme about being simple, being small. We find Jesus in the midst of that. And I think she was a great example of that. Oh, Father Dave, thank you so much for sharing all of that with us. Always great to be with you. It's good. Thank you so much.